Hey guys, what's up? It's Alex Arnesnes here, and welcome to my Ultimate Lava Strike Worms Guide. Now this guide's goal is going to be to show you how to kill lava strike worms in the wilderness uh, with as little risk as possible, and hopefully make it so you never die again while killing lava strike worms. So first we're going to talk about what are lava strike worms. Well, they actually require level 94 Slayer. They're Slayer creatures, and you have to kill them in the wilderness. And the reason you want to kill lava strike worms is mostly because of the searing ashes they drop. Every lava strike worm can, will drop a searing ash 100% of the time, which is worth 64k. So these are amazing to kill for these. They also have rare drops such as the worm spike, heart, and scalp. Now these fetch a pretty penny as well, but they are extremely, and I mean extremely, extremely rare. So if you're gonna go to Lava Strike Arms with the thought of getting one of these, just know they're really, really rare. Even when you're on task, they are insanely rare. All right, guys, so now I'm going to talk about the equipment setup and what requirements you should have. So you're going to need, obviously, 94 Slayer, but I do recommend having a decently high range level such as like 90, and you're probably going to want tier 80s at the minimum as your weapons, preferably tier 90 weapons somewhere in that range. So for the gear setup, I'm using Ascension Crossbows, but you do not have to do this. You can use like Chaotic Crossbows, you can use like a Wyvern Crossbow, um, you can use a Nox Bow. Uh, whatever you want, you will protect it on death, uh, you won't be Skulled. And if you get Skull Tricked, which I have never gotten Skull Tricked in, uh, you know, I've been in the Wildy a long time, I have the Chaos title, I'm working towards the Wildy Slayer titles, I've never been Skull Tricked. But if you are, I would recommend just bringing, if you're scared of that, I would recommend bringing like a Noxious Longbow, just one weapon. So then even if you're Skull Tricked, uh, you still won't lose it because of your protection prayers. Um, but another option is you can get the Hellfire Bow, which this you can actually find using your Wilderness Sword. You can find it in the Wilderness. I believe it requires level 99 range. Um, it's really strong and of course doesn't cost you anything. The only downside is it's kind of annoying to find every time you go to lava strike worms but that is also a good option too so as for armor uh royal dehyde is what you're going to want to use it's cheap it's effective um you're not really going to need anything fancy do not bring any like armadillo or any crazy gear even though you're unsculled it's just not worth it royal dehyde works just fine um, if you want, another option is you can get superior spined armor, which is a little bit more, maybe like a few hundred K, uh, but it's tier 65 power armor, so that's also decent. But I just bring Royal Dehyde because it's it's like 40K, 30K, and it's really, really easy uh, and simple, and who cares if you lose it. Uh, the next thing, as you can see, I have Globetrotter boots. These are not needed, but the boots are good because they can restore your run energy. And sometimes PKers will use Morgan's Javelins, or Throne Axes, I mean. Uh, both of those will lower your run energy, I believe. And uh, it's nice to have in case uh, you get attacked and they lower your run energy, although you probably won't be using them often. Uh, it's just something I bring to escape easier. Next, you can have an Amulet of Glory because it will allow you to Tele uh, at level 30 Wilderness, um, and it's just a decent cheap amulet. I have a Ring of Luck, but the ring you have doesn't really matter. You could bring an Archer's Ring if you want, which is also a cheap option. And then I have a Skill Cape, but you can bring a Ava's Accumulator, uh, basically any cheap cape, anything to put in that slot um, just to have. We're going for cheap here. Uh, and all that really matters is your weapon and to have, you know, a little bit of armor. As for aura, uh, I would recommend using vampirism uh, because it'll help you keep your health up and not have to use as much food. But if you're worried about prayer, you can also use penance aura as well. All right, so the last thing I'm going to talk about before we get into the inventory setup is going to be the Wilderness Sword 4. You can get this by completing the Wilderness Elite Diaries, and basically what it does is it makes it so Searing Ashes will always drop noted for you when carrying the sword. Uh, so this is like a huge thing to have if you're planning on doing Lava Strike Worms. I highly recommend you just grind this out before you do Lava Strike Worms. If you do not have it and you still want to do them, you can bring magic note paper and note your searing ashes, or you can uh, bring a yak and go down to level 30 wildy and yak your ashes back. But this just makes it so much easier 
Um, all your ashes will be noted and you will be able to just pick them up and have them noted and it's just a lifesaver. So I definitely recommend getting this. All right, guys, so now we're gonna move on to the inventory setup. Now, this is just my personal inventory setup. You can tweak it as you want, but I'll explain all the items in here as we go. So the first, obviously, the Wilderness Sword 4. Uh, this is allows you to tele out at level 30 Wilderness or below, kind of like a glory. And it also gives you teleports to be able to get to Lava Strike Worms faster. And if you carry it, of course, you'll note your ashes. Uh, the next thing, I have an anti-dragon shield. It's just a shield. The reason you want a shield is for when PKers come. If they do come, you can use defensives and very easily get away. So a shield makes this much easier. You can bring like a shield bow or a dark bow, something like that. Um, if you do bring a dark bow, it is no, I want to note that having mobile perk on like a dark bow or something to switch to is really nice because you will be able to surge more often and this will really help you escape PKers easier. So that's something also to look for. Uh, I have a super prayer renewal here, which is just to, uh, you know, keep my prayer up. Uh, overload, uh, whatever overloads you want to bring. Um, I usually just bring six doses a trip. You know, you can go for the hour trips, but I like to play it safe. Next, I bring five super restores. Of course, this is for prayer. You will be either soul splitting or praying range slash magic most of the time. However, uh, as we'll get into later, I prefer to soul split. Uh, then we have three brews, which the reason I bring this is basically just for PK air. So if I get attacked, I have brews to last longer and to be able to, you know, sailfish brew um, to live. And then of course we have the sailfish. I bring 10 sailfish in my inventory. Uh, I also have a yak that is full of sailfish as well, so uh, you should definitely bring a yak full of food. Uh, you can put some prayer pots in there if you want. I usually actually leave a few spaces open in my yak just so I can uh, put in some uh, drops I get if I want to. Um, then we have winter storage scrolls, which uh, you can use to yak back things like rune salvage and stuff like that. Uh, or if you don't have the Wilderness Sword, you will use those to yak back your Searing Ashes. Then we have a Fury Shark, which is actually a drop from Lava Strike Worms themselves. So you won't have this until you kill Lava Strike Worms. Uh, you don't need it. But what this does is basically if you eat it, it will give you, uh, it will allow you to protect an extra item. So basically, let's say you get Skull Tricked, which is very unlikely. Um, and then your prayer also drops which is also very unlikely for both of those things to happen. If you eat your Fury Shark, uh, you'll still protect an item, I believe, without protection prayer um, and while being Sculled. If you're not Sculled and you use protection prayer, this will allow you to protect five items. So that's a nice thing to have, although it's not really needed. It's just kind of a safety net for people that want to be extra cautious, but I honestly don't think you'll have too much to worry about. And then we have a Gorajan Mushroom, which th what this will do is it's, again, just for getting away from PKers. If you eat it, it will restore some of your health over a period of time and reduce damage taken in PvP by 15%. Um, then we have a Phoenix Necklace, which, you know, is self-explanatory. You put it on uh, if you're getting attacked, and if you go below a certain amount of health, it will heal you up. Um, and then finally, these are optional as well. I don't usually bring them, but they're portents of restoration. And these will also heal you if you drop below a certain amount of health. So these are all things that uh, are meant to help you, you know, survive PKers and help you get away. Um, and it's just enough uh, supplies to be able to kill lava strike worms for a good 30 minutes to an hour without having to bank. So now we're going to look on how to get to Lava Strike Worm. So you can start by running from Edgeville and take the same route that I'm taking in this video if you would like. Um, this is for people that uh, don't have the Wilderness Sword or anything like that. Uh, you can just run. It's a pretty simple route. Um, you go kind of past the uh, Wilderness Volcano. So you could use the Wilderness Lodestone to speed this up a little, but I thought I would just show the uh, the full route from Edgeville because it's it's not too bad. And uh, you'll go up to about 30 Wildy, 32 Wildy, and then there should be some Hobgoblins and you should be at the Lava Strike Worms. But another thing you can do if you have the Wilderness Sword, which is much easier, you can teleport to the Herb Patch in level 38 Wilderness using your Wilderness Sword. And basically from there, you're just gonna want to go west 
and uh, past the green dragons. And once you go west, you should come upon the lava strike worm. So this is a much, much easier method to get there. And the current method that I use because it is very, very fast. And uh, all you need is the wilderness sword. All right, so now we're gonna talk about the Lava Strike Worm's moves. It has two moves it can basically do uh, special attacks. And one, it will pull you in and it will go underground and it will come out and deal damage to you. So the easiest way to avoid this is just to spam click away uh, when the Lava Strike Worm pulls you in and you should walk away with no problem. If you do get damaged, it won't be th that much, so you won't really have to worry. Another move the Lava Strike Worm does is it will go underground um, but instead of pulling you, it will start to walk towards you. The little mound on the ground will move towards you. And for this, you're just going to want to walk away again like the other move. Because if the Lava Strike Worm comes under you, he will jump up and deal damage to you. But again, these moves are very, very simple and easy to avoid. And even if you get hit by these, like you're not paying attention, you're probably not going to die unless you're very low health. Now, as for killing the Lava Strike Worms themselves, it is very, very simple. I personally just use my Revolution Bar, and basically I will just Soul Split and use the Vampirism Aura, and basically I'll be able to heal back almost all of my health. Now, of course, I'll need to eat sometimes, but uh, if you have like a tier 90 and 99 range with overloads, you should have no problem uh, mostly healing back all your health. Now, if you're lower level or you just seem to not be doing as well with Soul Split, uh, you could pray range or mage. I would probably recommend range, praying range just because uh, you will have a decent amount of magic defense and you can th use things like devotion uh, and debilitate if you need to as well. But me personally, I usually just Soul Split these. Uh, there's nothing really to them other than the mechanics I showed you. So you just kill them, pick up the ashes, and then if you need to yak back some stuff, uh, you go ahead and yak it back. It's uh, pretty simple. All right, so the last thing I want to talk about is you can find a banker wandering around the wilderness, and sometimes they'll come near the lava strike worms, and this is a good way to uh, bank your searing ashes. So usually whenever I see this guy, I'll just bake my searing ashes and, uh, you know, most of my other stuff and take out more sailfish, more brews, uh, more restores, stuff like that. Uh, you won't always see this guy, but I would keep an eye out for him because when you see him, that's kind of a good time to put your, you know, ashes and loot in the bank uh, to kind of, you know, um, get them safe and then continue on with your trip. If you don't see him, however, of course, you can just uh, telly out once you... Uh, want to bank your ashes or if you don't feel comfortable anymore with how many ashes you have and yeah but definitely keep an eye out for this guy to make things easier all right so now we're going to talk about pkers and how to get away from pkers now i was actually at lava strike worms for four to five hours today and i didn't see a single pker so you will probably encounter some pkers if you camp there a while but it's not like the place is crawling with PKers. So I actually am using a clip from uh, my Revenant guide where I was attacked at Revenants. Now, Lava Strike Worms, it is not multi-combat, so only one person can attack you at a time. And if you get attacked, what you'll basically want to do is the main way to get away very easily. I have tanked people from level 38 all the way to the wilderness border uh, if they teleport block me with pretty much you know relative ease. Um, it's not hard at all to get away from even skilled PKers if you know what you're doing. So what you're going to want to do is the key is avoiding getting stunned. So if you get teleport blocked, you can't teleport. So you're going to have to get all the way to level one wilderness. So what you'll do is you will anticipate uh, when you get attacked and make sure to put your prayer up. And the reason you'll do this is because they'll try to drop your prayer uh, with something like Dragon Breath. So you'll always want to keep an eye on your prayer and make sure to get it back up if they drop it. The next thing you'll want to do is use defensive. So you'll want to anticipate or freedom uh, so they can't stun you. And then you'll want to try to surge away. After this, you'll want to, you know, of course, be eating and then put on your shield and start using defensives like reflect, resonance. You can use barricade. Um, if you're close to dying, you can use immortality. And actually, if you use immortality, this will clear your teleport block 
uh, because you're technically dying and coming back to life. And then you'll be able to teleport away uh, right away. So that is another strategy you can use. Um, but for me personally, I'll just, you know, anticipate, surge away, um, and then do something like devotion with my prayer up. And usually the care will give up by then. Um, but if they do decide to chase you, um, basically you just need to stop yourself from being stunned. So you'll want to rotate through using anticipation and freedom and try to have those up as much as possible while surging away as much as you can. If you have a yak full of food uh, and you have a shield, you should have absolutely no problem getting away from people. Of course, uh, it is easier said than done. It may take you a bit of practice and uh, getting PK'd or people trying to attack you because um, I have basically, I think only died like once or twice in the wild. And it's only been from uh, being attacked by teams at like Revenants. So in single way combat, uh, just stop the other people from stunning you and uh, surge away and you should be fine. Uh, most PKers will just give up if they realize that you're competent at all at getting away. Usually when I uh, see people die, they're really panicking. They don't know what to do. They're just being stunned and stunned and stunned. Their prayers being dropped and they get KO'd. Um, but if you stay calm, uh, you should have a pretty easy time getting away. Um, but you're honestly probably not going to see that many PKers at Lava Strike Worms as you think. Uh, like I said, I was there for four or five hours and didn't see a single peak air. Um, I would try to use low population worlds. Uh, if you're really scared, you can actually even go to your RuneScape client and change it to like a French world or something, which have way less people. So there's a lot of ways to uh, be safe at Lava Strike Worms, but hopefully with this guide, you won't die anymore. You won't get PK'd and you'll have a great way at, uh, a great time at getting tons of loot from Lava Strike Worms and hopefully getting those big rare drops. All right, so the last thing we're gonna look at is the loot. So basically from me killing Lava Strike Worms for about 45 to 50 minutes, I got this loot, which is 113 ashes, and I made 8.5 mil in 45 minutes or so. So this means you can make around 10 mil plus an hour. I would say you can get closer to 12 mil. I got pretty unlucky with the drops because you can actually get a lot of drops that give you five searing ashes, which are also noted. Um, so I didn't kill 113 because you get a few of those drops, but uh, I did kind of get unlucky with those. So I would say this is a pretty easy 8 to 10 mil an hour, maybe 12 mil an hour, depending how fast you kill them. But it is really, really good uh, considering how easy they are to kill. And of course, it's in the wilderness, but you're honestly risking like nothing. Even if I died, um, I wouldn't be risking that much seeing as I'm... Uh, usually banking the ashes once I hit a certain amount and I'm yakking most of my stuff back. So it is a really, really good monster to kill and I wish you all luck. And uh, if this video and guide helped you out, please make sure to leave a like down below and subscribe if you want more guides like these because I'll be coming out with a ton more. Uh, thank you guys for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can join my channel memberships. You can click the join button down below or there will be a button on the screen and you can get a whole bunch of cool perks, add me in game, PVM with me, stuff like that. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. And I also wanna thank all my channel members I have currently. Thank you guys so much and I will see you in the next video.